Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 605 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I am your host, Christian Piles, joined, as always, by two industry leaders, Ben Funky Askren, my favorite boxer, personally, and <laughs> Stephen Kyle Brackey. Ben, how are you? How's the training going? I'm seeing a lot of videos. Did you Most see this, of did you see this punching bag I got yesterday? It's so yes. tremendous. Did someone just send uh, that to you? Uh, well, there's a company up here called Combat Corner, uh, who I, I know the owner of, and they're they're they start out really small, but they're they're growing rapidly. They're doing, he does a really good job, um, and it was actually his suggestion. You know, I told him, I told him, hey man, uh, you know, I need I need to get a bag to hang up in my academy, and uh, he said, what about this? And I said, yes, I will take that. So listen, here's the deal, Christian. They can do custom bags. They're not even that expensive. Look at and you guys could put one up in the office. So say like put Bader's face on it. It would be tremendous. And everyone's That'd be going, great. Bah, 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 punches Bader every day. Racky always said I have a very punchable face. So you do. That, you know what? That's true. <laughs> if they put you up. You you probably get. If you put a bag of you and a bag of Bader, you would get punched way more. Okay. I. You know what? I'll take it. I uh, I can't help my face. Yeah. So uh, okay. So. I, listen, my face may be punchable, but compared to Jake Paul, I, I think I'm not quite that. There's not no that, comparison. There's no, no comparison. Bracky, right. you got a company card? What? Do you have a company card? No. Oh, come on, man. What? What are you talking about? Okay, like listen, a business card? Oh, you guys expense it. Okay, listen, here's the Just go to that post oh, I made, swipe card. up. Buy the piles punching bag and expense it <laughs> as like workout equipment for the, you guys. Have some, I've seen some dumbbells and stuff in the at Flow oh, HQ. We got a Bowflex. We got a Bowflex. It, it came yeah, with like I'm a Bowflex. About. It came with a Bowflex hatchet as well. That we're we're sort of figuring out how to use. Um, we'll show you when you get here. Whenever that is, I don't know when you're coming back, Ben. But hopefully soon. Well, I was just there last month. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Hey, well, all right, we got a lot to get into because, yes, one, we dope. finally got to watch Penn State wrestle, and it, it was sort of weird. It was something. It was something. It was a thing. We saw definitely, unquestionably, the worst officiated weekend I can ever remember in college wrestling. There were so many really bad ones. There were so many calls. I was like, there's just no, there's just, it's like inexcusable. And I think it's, I think what makes it tougher for wrestling fans is like, Basically, all wrestling fans or the vast majority of wrestling fans are really, really into it. It's a diehard sport, and it's, it r comes with intimate knowledge of the sport. There's very few, and hopefully that's a growing number, of casual fans, right? People know it intimately. So when you see some of these calls, I think that's why it raises to the level of where you're just like, it's audacious, whereas... If you watch an NBA game, you're like, oh, okay, maybe that's a, maybe you don't know it as well, or the NFL. Well, don't you think some NBA fans feel that way, Christian? And I, I don't know the NBA rules, so I can't comment on the expertise. But I can tell you some calls this weekend. I mean, I was like, what's? I mean, the Chad Red one. That's that's the the most obvious one, Christian. I don't know what happened. I don't I don't know what rule that was. The the obviously the the announcers were not very good. Explain, the, the explain what happened. Saying, uh, oh, we can't bring a clip up either, can we? Well, Chad Red cradles my guy Dom Dentino. Jeez, Dom, come on, man. You know, Chad Red's got a cradle, and he goes cartwheel cradle, and the ref calls it a legal hold. I don't know what a legal hold that is, I have no idea for the life of me. But the announcer, the announcer didn't even realize it was a legal hold. The announcer kept saying that the ref called it potentially dangerous, which is not what happened. The yeah. ref gave Dom a point, um, and literally. I don't even have the slightest idea what rule he could be thinking of that would be an illegal hold. I have no idea. I, I'm and not. Listen, I know wrestling, sure. but I don't want to study this shit. I don't yeah. know. Do you know? No, I don't know. I saw it. I was like, I don't know. It'd be, if we, I watched Ed Ruth do that for years and years. All right. It's a great. I, yeah, it's a great move. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, the. Why don't we just talk about the, the Nebraska Wisconsin well, Christian, duel? I just need to know. I need to know what the illegal hold was. Can you solve this riddle for ben, me? Ben, I don't know, Ben. That's I why would, it's a bad call. I, I have would, no uh, idea. I'd love to know what he told Chad. 
because uh, you saw the yeah. look on his face. Like, he was stunned. And then the official came over and talked to him for a second. Uh, I would love to know what he said. Okay. So the Seriously. I don't I don't know what it was. I don't know what I mean. Listen, they didn't let Christian Lance well, take bottom in the third period. I, I don't I can't Let's explain that. All the rules. Let's go through all the rules that could get you a penalty point. There's a bunch of rules. This could get you a penalty point. Locked hands. Well, it wasn't locked hands. It was a cradle, right? Illegal headlock. No, it wasn't illegal headlock. Like what? It was a slam. No, it wasn't a slam. Like I, I'm lost. I don't know what. I don't know what hold it could be that's illegal yeah i don't i don't know buddy i don't know i have no idea um i I hope you i hope you didn't come on the show thinking i was gonna or bracky were gonna have the answer for why i called this terrible i have no idea somebody this is journalism can't someone go ask that referee like hey man what was the call don't you think nebraska's coaching staff you know what dang it i'm texting brian center what was the call you know i don't know what rule we can't because the I mean, I guess if you knew that guy, you could go find him and track him down or whatever. But like in the NCAA and the NFL, all these major organizations, they don't require officials that have to go explain themselves ever. I mean, I don't know how many times. Yes, you, you never have to. They blow a call in college football. They don't just say anything. The conference just issues an apology. Oh, sorry. This team should have won, but the officials screwed it up. But the coaches and the players got to go answer questions. You got these bums. All right, who? Someone's trying to explain it. Um, Who's trying to oh, explain Kozak. it? In the chat oh, or the, he didn't realize he had the leg and thought he just had the head and arm. Well, so I was thinking but it that was wouldn't, that wouldn't be illegal either. Well, if it's like the James Fleming snapper, that would be. I thought that was potentially dangerous. I think I think they specifically made it an illegal hold. Well, some, where's, the, where's the damn rule book? NC... Yeah, there's <laughs> not going to be anything in the rule book about a cradle and someone trying to do a cartwheel in there. Oh, so surely, you, they have, surely, Christian, they have a rule of illegal holds, and I can go through them. Uh, oh, man. I got to download, download it. No, it's, please don't do that during I'll, this show. Can I am. We just... I'm downloading right now. I'm downloading oh, the gosh. rule book right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, the, the entire duel was puzzling because at 125 liam cronin lost a team point for i think for Again? tossing yes do you see that okay. i don't um uh, i didn't see anything that i thought would be team point worthy no i did not well he lost a team point he won the match and then i think as maybe he tossed he, the I headgear it's because he underhand tossed his headgear back to the nebraska corner which yeah. i don't understand why that's but that has been been. I remember, they took the freaking point from Bo Nickel after he pinned Miles Martin. Um, so Sorry. then, one forty one, they have the super puzzling cradle called that illegal. One forty nine was, I think, the worst because that was. Uh, I, they I straight up. Share, these are all Wisconsin guys. I don't want to crap on them. <laughs> what, what the heck happened there? So first thing happens, Hardy gets a takedown and. I don't know if he had a takedown or not, but he was on top. Was, I think it was a reversal on a low leg cradle. And he had a bottom leg cradle. He had it cinched nice. It, it would have been really tough for Sharon Brock to not give up near fall there. And his leg is sort of strange because Sharon Brock appears to be kind of flexible. He's, he's, Sharon Brock's very flexible. So actually, I don't know. I, I cannot say for sure that Hardy would have gotten back points against a lot of people who would, but Drew is very like unique in the way he moves which also is probably what made the situation look a little sketchy and why the ref referee stopped it but yes that i would say but additionally uh, uh, regardless he wasn't getting out of that situation anytime soon he, w- he wasn't poised yeah. for an escape and he ended up getting a restart um from what looked to be a highly potentially near fall and then at the end of the match, they called it a reversal that I just can't, I can't get with. I just didn't think that was too bad. I don't know if you're, it was, it was sort of. A, oh neat, no, it was really bad. It was close to like a, uh, a, you know, because in reversal criteria is not exactly takedown criteria. If you get behind the guy, it's two. But Hardy had the wizard the entire time. He never cleared that, and they gave the two. Well, Brock, no, there, there was a. There was a split second where it looked like Sharon Brock was going to be able to sneak around the back. He wasn't there, but he was kind of like had an opening for a second. And then, and then Hardy comes back and puts the wizard in. Right. And at that point, you're like, okay, he's screwed. He's not getting behind him now. And then like for me, 
I didn't even realize the referee had awarded a reversal. So I'm like, oh, damn. Well, this match is over. But then I knew I knew what happened because I watched it post facto. And I'm like, wait. So then I had to like rewind and figure out that they actually gave him a reversal, which I was totally puzzled because I knew what the result was. Yes. Yes, that was really weird. So that decides the match. Brock Hardy loses to Sharon Brock. I mean, lost in this, lost in the officiating and all that. Wisconsin wrestled pretty dang tough. I thought they looked pretty yeah. good, um, mm -hmm. top to bottom. Now they lost, you know, at heavyweight. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with with Hilger. He's lost to Luffman and now um, Christian Lance. We've seen Christian Lance kind of coming, and maybe those guys are just really good now. But that was kind of surprising. Yeah. Then Peyton Rob pins his guy, and they oh. he's so jacked. Oh, my I mean, God. Remember, this is this is this duel was. Uh, at Nebraska, honoring their lost teammate Christian Miller, who who passed away, they're fired up. They're all wearing the the shirts. This is a this is a big duel. There's a lot of emotion in this. Rob gets up, and I think it was for Nebraska celebration on the sidelines. Who knows what they they were going they were going wild on the sidelines. They were celebrating. It was a yeah. big pin from Peyton Rob, and so they lost another team point. So two team points, which. It has been a long-standing uh, FRL pillar that you know, and I think Nomad was the one. Nebraska that just, loves giving up team points. They love it. They're addicted to just giving up the team points, and but it's the stupidest thing ever that you can lose team points. Bracky gets really steamed about it. It makes no sense at all. I yeah, don't know. Bracky I don't know what the mechanism should be to punish. Like I get, you know, guys can't be doing um, going crazy on the sidelines, or they can't come on the mat. There should be some sort of a punishment. It needs to be something Why? like. Um, they didn't come out on the mat. Yeah. They didn't do no, 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 no. I don't. I'm not saying for what they did. I'm saying, listen, if if Mark Manning sprints out on the mat, there's okay, some, some yeah. sort of opinion. But it needs to not be a team point. It needs it's to be like, like a, it's like a, a yellow a, card, red card situation. It's like some kind of, yeah, exactly. Some kind of technical like or fine. something like, yeah. you're like, hey, next one, you're out of here. You yeah. kick him out. Yeah, do something like that. And then, oh, here's how you do it. And if if you get like three or four techs, you have to sit out a duel if you're not ejected, right. if they accumulate. Mm, like that. That'll yeah. help. Yeah. And you don't have to change the team. Why does Liam Cronin only get a two-point decision because he tossed Edgar? Or, or even worse, Peyton Rob pins a guy on the mat because someone violated some nebulous mat area when I watched a certain six-time world and Olympic champion walk out on the mat and they're not going to say nothing to him. Uh, so, whatever he wants. He goes wherever he wants. He could go wherever and he listen. Has, he does whatever he wants. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with the special Coach Smith rule. He can walk wherever he wants. If he wants to set the bottom man and make sure the hands on the belly and the elbow, that's his right. He earned it. But I'm just saying, it's not even. They let some coaches kind of go and do whatever, and others, it's it's all cool. So, okay. So, they need to stop taking okay. team points. Well, no. Okay, what? I have. I, I'm sorry. F finish your rant, and then I I found all my legal holds, and we need to go through them, Christian. <laughs> all right, well, we're going educate to educate our crowd and talk about uh, the 141. Finish. Your, sorry, I cut off your rant, but I'm ready for these illegal. Well, holds. I love a good rant, but I think I was at the end of it. I have more I'd like to say about the Nebraska Wisconsin duel, but let's get into okay. every illegal hold ready, that Brad? exists. Okay, section six. Illegal holds. Article one, general legal holds, talks about, hey, we got a bunch of legal holds and stuff. Okay, number one, grasping fingers or grabbing fingers, you got to grab all four, right? Number, mm -hmm. obviously it wasn't that. Number two, slam, wasn't that. Number four, I wouldn't have been able to name this rule. It's called an intentional drill, a forceful fallback, uh, and shall be called friendly misconduct when the defensive guy is in a standing position and offensive guy is behind him. So kind of like Gilman Waters. Yes, Gilman Waters. Yes. Yep. Yep. So I would not have been able to cite that rule, but that's a rule. Um, over scissors. So when your leg is hopped, hooked over the top of the toe, uh, which this is a dumb one. Do you guys, it's when they have the figure four leg in and then they lock over the back of the leg. And I don't I have no idea why it's illegal. Someone thinks you can hurt someone. I've never seen anyone be even slightly injured in this move. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Dumb. Uh, that one should be taken out. But it wasn't the uh, rule for Chad Red. It was not the red. Locked hands. Obviously not. Well. The article says injury. Um, for injury caused by illegal action. That doesn't really. I don't even know why that's in there. It doesn't make sense. Um, 
Legal hold to illegal. So a wrestler applying a legal hold should not be penalized when the opponent turns it into an illegal hold. Okay, so that wasn't the case. Double arm bar is illegal if the hands are locked in the middle of the back. Not the case. Rear double knee kickback, right? So when you're standing, you can't jump up and kick their knees out. Yep. That's fine. Neck bow. Um, this this was maybe the sound the most promising. When in the top position, it is illegal for the offensive wrestler to apply a head and arm side headlock from the side position and then somersault toward and off a de- uh, somersault and over the defensive wrestler's head. This is the so James it wasn't Fleming rule. Head- but it wasn't a side headlock. But, or, the Tyler, issue you can here. go ahead and pull the pictures. These are the pictures in the rule book of it. See? Yes. So, but it says very clearly uh, uh, arm and head side headlock. It says that very clearly. So he um, missed so that he had the leg. I guess so. And the other thing about this, this is dumb that it's illegal. This is a very frequently used hold in jujitsu. Uh, at no point does it injure somebody. It may choke them, <laughs> but obviously the person on bottom, could they could just roll over. They don't have to not roll over. That's their decision. And actually, that leads me into another point from this weekend. Okay, so let me finish this, and then I want to go to the other point. Um, high and outside single back trip. It wasn't that. Hands in the face was not that. Figure four scissors was not that. So obviously, they think it was the neck bow. Or he just saw, not. like chat up on his head and if tyler can go ahead and pull yeah. that picture back up one time b is literally yeah. the exact or yeah. he just saw that and it's like oh can't allow that yeah yeah so anyways it definitely was not illegal the ref blew it um this hold though should not be illegal it is not going to hurt anyone it may choke them a little bit but again you can just roll over to alleviate the pressure which is what you're supposed to do in wrestling you're supposed to put someone in enough pressure or enough pain where it causes them to then move in a position where they don't want to move to where you're going to then score more points and or a pin okay which my next point is there's way too many effing potentially dangerous is these referees don't really understand when a wrestler is and is not in danger of hurting their knee. And they're way too overzealous with these calls. And you got to think these guys are in a college wrestling room on a regular basis. And there's not a referee stopping them every 45 seconds when their knees are bending a little strange, you know? Yeah. In addition to that, most of these guys put themselves in those positions. That and was what also I was going to say. They also know when the referees will call them. So when they're in a non, uh, not a beneficial position themselves, they're more uh, liable to put themselves in a bad position and then potentially dangerous get called. But yeah, these, I mean, listen, and the worst that's going to happen, well, I guess you could possibly get a torn ACL. That's really, really rare. <laughs> um, it's more like, dude, you're going to strain your LCL. You're going to strain your MCL. Listen, don't be a wimp. And don't put yourself in those positions again, and you'll be fine, Jack. That's about it. Stop calling potentially dangerous referees. You don't need it. These guys, they're college athletes. The tough guys. They don't need your protections. Stop stopping our wrestling when the wrestling should not be stopped. And they're working you. Don't let, don't get worked, refs. They're working. Let's, let's if you put it frame it they're that way. Like, you. They're trying to trick you. Don't be tricked. Don't be deceived. Because you see it all the time. The, the exact thing you you outline is a guy will put himself in a potentially dangerous situation to get a stalemate. And um, and the coaches, as soon as their guy is close to getting knee. taken down, watch a knee, watch a knee, watch so his annoying. knee here. So yeah. annoying. It's like that. Yeah, they're they're all about safety. Um, yeah, it's yeah, totally like, crazy. And, and like watch a knee, like as if they ever stop that situation in practice. I mean, I'll tell you guys, I coach high school yeah. kids, which aren't as mature as college kids. There's only one situation I stop, and it's um, it's the one that a lot of people end up getting hurt in. It's where they, they pass the leg to the inside and they end up, it's in the jiu-jitsu 50-50 position, you know, where mm-hmm. the legs are interlocked. You know what I'm saying, Christian? Yeah, I've seen it. Like the leg, the inside legs are interlocked here and then when one of them sits up, it cranks on the hip and the knee. Mm-hmm. Like it's almost guaranteed injury um, if uh, if they if they keep fighting it uh, yeah. and one does not belly down. It's almost guaranteed they're hurt. That's the only situation to stop in practice. Everything else, they better figure it out themselves, and I can tell you we have very minimal, minimal knee injuries in practice. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. The referees, stop stopping it. It's really, I mean, it's like, you know, I think it was maybe the Keck guys in match was stopped like three or four times or something because of it. it. And in situations where it wasn't even close to potentially dangerous, in my opinion. I think, I think that that's the, the match I'm thinking of. I, I thought I think so too, and it it hurt Kekaisen, and it was it was actually to protect Kekaisen, if I'm remembering correctly. And I remember yeah. him looking kind of so like, hold on. I gotta get up here, Christian. We got a demonstration. The, here we referees, go. Referees, referees. Yeah. I gotta I gotta I gotta flip over to the other screen to make sure I'm on the Facebook, so I'm delayed. 
Uh, look, the knee, knee, the knee bends in towards the butt. It bends in as far as it can go. Like you're never going to get hurt yeah. in that situation. Never, ever, ever. You're not going to get hurt there. Yeah. Ever. It's designed Why are you stopping to. that? The people body see, moves that way. Yeah. People see the, the foot, the foot, the heel near the butt and they get nervous. I have no idea why. It's when it's out is when it's like, okay, yeah, that's out that's that concerning. way. Or when it starts, and jujitsu guys are really flexible, so you never heard them there. But when, or when the knee, you know, heel starts coming up this way and uh -huh. the knee's bending out, that's the other situation where you could potentially get hurt. But the knee, the, the leg going across the back, that is never going to hurt anybody ever, ever. Right. Uh, yeah. So ridiculous. Not ideal. Okay. 84. So this is, this is, a, um, hold on. Let me address Larry Ellie. He says the over scissors can hyperextend the knee. Christian, I've been wrestling for 30 years. I have never seen that happen one time, not once. And then, you know, I, I will additionally go into jujitsu and MMA. If you could actually hurt someone like that, people would hurt someone like that. And nobody hurts anyone like that because it doesn't work. It's really yeah. that simple. It doesn't, it, I mean, that, that rule should be out of the book because where I actually see it is like, you know, one of my high school kids who doesn't know what the hell they're doing just like does it on accident and then they get called and they're like, mm -hmm. what did I do? I'm like, oh, well, there's this really stupid rule that says you can't put that foot over there and that's it. So just yeah. like, don't do that. I've never, I've never seen anyone get hurt with it either. All right. Are you good? I don't want to start something else. <laughs> Who, me or yeah, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> oh, it is. I would just, this, the, the knee thing, it gets me fired up every single year. And it's just like, I, I feel like the referees don't understand stuff. And then, you know, I, I get further annoyed, obviously, because I'm a, you know, I was a pinner and good Legend. guys. Well, good guys, you have to, you have to even put them in situations where they don't want to be to pin them. They're not just like, hey, let me roll over, you know? And, uh, while we don't want to cause long-term injury, we want we do need to cause discomfort and put them in, in their body in precarious situations. And then when you know when the bottom guy understands how they can manipulate the rules to make the referee stop it, it's it's annoying as shit. So like even like a power half when that you know when the arm gets bent oh, over yeah. the head, it's like you they can roll over, just roll over. And if I was if I was the referee, if I got the runner, I'd be like. Bottom man, you can roll over. I'm not stopping this. Bottom man, you can roll over. I'm not stopping this. Like if maybe if somehow the bottom man was trapped and they couldn't roll over, I would stop it because it is potentially dangerous because the bottom man cannot get himself out of the situation. Literally, in an, but if the bottom man the can roll over, yeah, roll your butt. Well, so, okay. Sometimes they put the double legs in, and the top guy's just trying to be a dick, and they're not actually trying to turn them. They're just trying to crank on them. So that would be a situation where the bottom guy can't actually turn. But when there's one leg in, dude, they can turn every time, every time. Yeah. Um, no, the the power half one is very strange to me. Logan it, Stieber always used to say, you can go over if you want. Because when he was always they can running go his over. bars. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Stop stopping wrestling. It's a good line. Um, That's a good line. I could be the referee. I Stop being a wimp. I'm not stopping. Just keep going. You could Great move. Hey, listen. What? Yeah. You need to get your officials card or whatever. You can you can be a ref for our for our events. <laughs> the NCAA officials should at least have to go out to AWA and go through a a scrambling thing with you. Yeah, I mean, ju just even like the understanding of and and it's not easy because I will I will tell you guys straight up. My freshman year, when I was like starting to freshman year of college, when I was starting to scramble and I didn't really know what I was doing, like I hurt my knees like four or five times, small injuries, you know, like strained LCL, strained MCL, that that kind of that kind of stuff. Just small injuries. I didn't I didn't understand the right ways to move, and I was putting myself in precarious situations. And then once I started understanding how the knees moved and how the bodies move, it's like okay, well, like I'm not going to move that way because if I move that way, I'm going to get hurt. So I'll just move this other way. And then you understand when you're safe and when you're not. And so I think a lot of these referees, like, I mean, the, the worst one's the one we talked about with, you know, the leg getting pulled against the, the back of the leg. Like, literally, you are never, ever, ever going to get hurt there. Ever. I do think you so, are at, at asking a bit much of, I mean, you're you're saying freshman Ben Askren didn't understand these positions. You weren't some bum. You were like a Fargo champion. Yeah. Mother. So it's like, all right, well, very few wrestling officials are going to reach even that level of wrestling. So I, 
I don't know. I, I do I do think there's going to be a level of ignorance for a lot of refs in these positions just because most of them are never going to get to a point where they've been in those situations, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's where they could. And I, to my knowledge, I mean, I, I've never been asked, and I, I think I've volunteered a few times on this program. I've never been asked to come into an official's clinic and explain some of these situations. And I've, and I've volunteered myself. To my knowledge, I've never had a friend tell me I've been invited to a referee's clinic. I mean, because w- once they understand it one time, there's going to be an evolution, but the evolution is re- relatively slow. Um, so, you know, once they get it the one time, they kind of they kind of are going to get it, you know? So to bring someone in for a couple of days to a clinic just to – and honestly, I think it would just make them feel more comfortable because, yes, wrestling has evolved over the last 10 to 15 years significantly. And no, it's not your fault that there's new moves happening. And let's just figure it out so everyone um, can feel comfortable there. All right. I feel comfortable moving on. Um, wait, let's see. Let's oh, f- Vans. No, we have to talk about Taylor, Taylor Vans. Yeah, Taylor Vans. couple things. This dude needs to start hitting some cardio or something. He did not look great. It kind of made, it, it's sort of putting the Nelson uh, loss into further perspective. They're like, okay, something's up with yeah. Taylor Vans. Right, because Nelson, Nelson lost to yeah. Bronicle. Bronicle's looking really good this year. Um, and mm, I feel like it's like we had that ranking right. Oh, once again, mm. once again. No, you questioned it. That's fine. That's fine. I'm an idiot. Um, but so Vince did not look good. But I'm pretty sure he had Chris Weiler's pinned. He looked pretty pinned to me. Oh well. But, if, but we're then, going, if we're going, if we're going by Justin Cardani, uh, uh, Spencer and then he. Well, listen, you know Spencer's what? Terrorist. Spencer Lee pinned Patrick McKee four to five times before they called it there. So, <laughs> like, you know what? You're one ahead already. You know, close enough. Uh, Let's save some time. Yeah. Let's beat the traffic kind of thing. No, when he mm-hmm. slapped the mat, he was he was in near fall criteria at the point he slapped the mat. But that's about all you could say. But you know what? Um, they just played. Cardani went full, like, parterre. How like gave him the robless treatment, and I was like, oh, "Okay, that's this the best is, idea. It's the greatest idea, and it sort of worked for a long time. And it felt like it worked for a long time, but it didn't even get out of the first period. Was the crazy thing? I was like, K- Caleb, of course, was watching. And it was like, what? He can't do that. He has to. And I'm like, what? Well, he may he may not pin everyone this year, and he does, still doesn't get out of the first period. But I thought it mm-hmm. it did stymie him for a little bit. But um. Yeah, yeah, no, he he wasn't pinned. But but yes, compared to the Vince thing, it's funny. But yeah, Vince is just letting guys in so easily. He's, he's running. It just didn't look very what Taylor about, Vinzy. Do you think there's a chance he's he's sucking a lot of weight? Because obviously Eric Schultz is ranked very highly at 197, so it's not like he could move up if he wanted to. Is that a, is that a reason, or is he just like not training that hard or something? I am certain that it's not him not training hard. I just don't think he's that kind of a guy. Um, has I don't he, know him at all. So has he had training opportunities limited for various? Because remember, he missed the one match with a, I think it was a skin thing. Yeah. I don't know if that had him off the mat for a while. Um, maybe just okay. He is a guy that's had some variance in his career. Yep, more ebbs and flows. He's not been just like a rock solid guy. He'll like lose to a guy. He'd be like, I feel like Taylor Benz should beat him, and even mm-hmm. still, he. He could have won that match, but it was just kind of how it looked. He's guys were, and Wilder's good. Wilder's very good. He was just peppering his yeah. legs, and he really didn't look like he had the defense to stop him. Yeah, I mean that that, that was it more than anything to me is that he just looked gassed. It was very low energy after that first exchange, and the first exchange was what you know a minute, minute and a half into the match, and after that he just he didn't do a whole lot the entire match. Right. And then the uh, the the chef's kiss, the finishing touches on the uh, on the officials' masterclass here in Nebraska. They don't let Christian Lance take bottom in the third period. What, it was, what even happened? Another one where I was trying to figure out what happened. So it uh, to the refs. I don't know credit, but it was sort of weird. The second period ends. 
Christian Lance gets up and walks immediately towards the bench and doesn't stop walking. Like, where, where <laughs> are Rutgers you going? It was kind of like blocking him almost, right? Yeah, but where are you going? There's nowhere, th Christian, there's nowhere to go. He wanted he, to talk. He wanted to have a no. coffee talk with Mark Mann. There's not, it's, there's no conference. There's, there's only a couple things you can say. You can go here or you can say bottom. That, or top. You can choose. Well, you wanted top. What, you know what? You could take top. Choose top. But, uh, there's not, there's no great discussion here. You don't get a time for a conference to really. Now, if you get out or do this, it's like no bottom or neutral. So I will give the ref a little bit of credit, and you can see Christian say he's like he's clearly talking to ref. He's like, should I take neutral or says the word neutral, and the ref goes, all right, neutral, and he's like, no, 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 and he's like bottom, bottom, and he's like, nope, we're so going weird. neutral. It was weird. I mean, it's like the ref just wanted to. Be yeah, I've seen, kind of a hardo there. Yeah, I've seen guys tell a ref one position and then change their mind and the ref lets them. I don't. Well, if you no, yeah, never, I don't think the first thing that's dumb. The first thing out of your mouth should not be final answer. I mean, I don't want you to say like neutral and then stand around for twelve seconds and then be like, nah, change my mind. Yeah, but I mean, like if you misspeak, right? And like, I see a lot in youth wrestling. Even the referees are really hard asses about it. It's like. The, the kid says something before they look at me, they, and then I say, no, 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 no man, defer or That's whatever. That's what, yeah. Right? I've and seen guys like, go just nope, like, change it. just go like auto, you know, like it's your choice, you know, auto bottom. And then if it, and then yeah. their coach will be like, no, 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 neutral. And then they'll go, no, 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 neutral. And the ref will let them. It's different. For me, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just disagree with you guys on that. I feel, <clears> you say <throat> one, oh. I think he did say the words neutral, but he wasn't. He was talking to He his was corner. talking. He wasn't saying my choice is neutral. If 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 the period yes. break ends and you say neutral or you indicate bottom, then I think you should be held to that. I think in high school it's a little different because they those kids don't know anything basically. Uh yeah. but if the if a college wrestler indicates but I don't think you should be allowed to change it. But I don't think Christian Lance really chose neutral. He just said the word neutral as he was talking to his coach, and the ref kind of went yeah, he just I think so he just weird. wanted wanted to have That's some great. authority there. But then Christian Lance, he almost takes down Hilger in overtime. He's his little he has kind of like a right to left low level shot. It's really nice. He hit it twice mm -hmm. and he finished it in overtime uh, to win the duel. The duel was on the line. Maybe it was all setting up the win in dramatic fashion. Uh, but it was it was just a really crazy duel with a lot of weird calls in it. But don't worry, uh, uh, ref, you were not alone this weekend. Um, I well, tweeted. Can I say, uh, yeah, Aaron Sweezy in the comments on Facebook. Uh, I think Christian Lance might be my hero now. So he said Christian Lance in his redshirt year. I guess he was at Fort Hay State, not Nebraska. He wrestled seven opens in four weeks, doubling up three weekends in a row. You know how many pins he could have got, Christian? Oh my god, <laughs> dog! I should have, I should have done that. I would have like thirty in in, six, in four weeks. Yeah, I can't imagine the the uh, level of rigor involved in the Fort Hayes State Red Shirt Open Circuit, but I bet there's there's lots of very pin, pinnable individuals. You could have now here. Could you have oh, done this? Awesome. Could you have double Christian entered seventy four and eighty four? Oh, can you do that? Is that legal? It's never happened, but. At some of these opens, maybe you could do it. Should have tried. Yeah, you should have tried. You should have. You or maybe you could have. Your freshman sophomore year, you could have double entered, done the open and the freshman sophomore. There's options. Yeah, there's options. There's I options. I do think as bad as all these calls were, I think the worst stall, the worst call I saw all all weekend long, and there was some intense competition for this oh. award. Okay, this was like. You know, the Hodge Trophy when you've got Kyle Snyder and Zane Rutherford and Bo Nickel all bat on for it. Malik Heinzelman got hit for stalling. Here's the here's the exact what oh, happened. I didn't see this one. Uh, I, I tweeted about it. Um, so Malik hits a nice high crotch, doubles off, gets a takedown on Rayvon Foley. Foley hits a little sit out. He gets away with like 117 on the clock. Heinzelman... Sort of. Here we go. Here, here it is. So note that Malik just got a takedown. He just got a takedown. He's on top of Foley here. Here's there's my. Well, we're in period one. So does he have two takedowns by now, or was it takedown reversal or something? Two, two takedowns, I think. He Malik okay. lost in all this in this terrible call. All right. So here we go. And stalling. 
He circled back in. That Johnny, Qu- it might be Johnny Quickstall. It's Angel. No, that's Johnny like, Terrible Stall call. That's terrible. You can't call stalling there. He doesn't even go out of bounds, Ben. You got, a- you got take down Quickstall. That's not stalling. <laughs> that, yeah, that's just he terrible. He didn't have enough time Listen, to okay, stall. Hold on, hold on. I'm actually going to defend the. I didn't see what happened in the minutes prior to this, so maybe he was stalling the whole time and got a lucky double leg, and the ref was like, I was going to call him. As soon as he gets up, <laughs> I'm going to hit this dude. You got problems. If you, Ben, you would have lost your mind if that happened to your guy. He just got a takedown off a leg attack. He had another one earlier in the match. It's a terrible call. Yeah, it's pretty bad, huh? It's atrocious. If he had, Now, listen, if he had backed straight out of bounds and they had to have a restart... That's a clear stall call. He circled back in. He got hit for stalling literally in the middle of circling back in. After he just scored. Yeah. Was ben, Ben, resign, no sir. I got no defense. Hey, There's I no... think I did call. Hey, listen, I think I called the Malik kinds of an upset, though, so you guys can. Uh, I called it, you know, too. Me... I, I, I'm, I called you did? it? Yes, absolutely. You should I'm back. positive. Hey, what were our Tuesday headlines? Oh, I think my Tuesday, I think I called. Mine Kat was Eisen. close. And I was right on that one. What was my second one? I said a second one, but I can't remember what it was. I can't what remember. What was yours again, Christian? Mine, I just missed it. I had Nate. Uh, I had Mark Hall tech falling Nate Jackson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't quite happen. I was close. Um, there were almost 10 total points scored in that match. But no, Nate Jackson won it, won it late. Um, yeah. He continues to be the, he's the COVID national champion. He is, he is uh, single-handed. Everywhere. He's everywhere. That's the most matches in the world. In the world. That's a mm-hmm. that's pretty good. And he's wrestled the most matches in the world, and he has won the vast majority of them. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's really And good. he's bumping up taking all comers. I mean, he, he wrestled and wrestled Jaden Cox. He wrestled Jaden. He's wrestling Win Mahalik. He literally will wrestle a- anyone. Outstanding. Good for him. Yeah, good for, yeah. Good for Nate Jackson. Great. It was, a, it was an entertaining match because... Well, one, early on, I, I was like, I was feeling pretty good. I was like, oh, okay, I think Mark's going to be okay here because he's getting underhooks. He's kind of moving them around, and Nate Nate just kind of figured out. And Mark was winning late, and then Nate, he could have uh, he could have t- taken the lead with a takedown, but he just got a one. So he had to get two scores late, and he got them in the last, I don't know, 10 seconds. It was, it was an exciting it was an exciting. You don't match. see that very often against Mark Hall. Nope, nope. I do th- – I. I was wondering how big or small Mark would look. I did think he looked small. And I think we knew he probably yeah. would. And it's going to take time for him to be a full-size 86. And But he was in on some of those shots. And it looked like when Jordan was in on David, it's like, whoa. That's just like the yeah. angle is going to be tough for him to finish on. So Man, don't you think that uh, Mark's going to go 79 next year? Or you know, even possibly this year. Because this year we have the World Championships in October. Um. Yeah, he absolutely should. He, he shouldn't get too big because. Um, you should do seventy nine. You, you should focus on making the world team at seventy nine. I mean, that's yeah, going to be not, that's October. Mm-hmm. I, now, he may have to go through like Dake if Dake doesn't make the team or whatever. And that's going to be a lot harder. But you I know, mean, it's good. It should be Dake or Burroughs, right? I don't know. If, I don't know if Jordan would do it. I don't know if he'll go up. You think, okay, so listen, if Jordan loses to Kyle, that happens. Kyle's likely going to, whoever wins, Jordan or, or Kyle, will win Olympic medal. Okay, yes. I think there's a very, very small chance they don't. Um, so if that happens, then they have the spot for 74 at the World Championship. Oh, yeah, it's also. guaranteed. Mm-hmm. It's guaranteed. Right. It's, it's guaranteed. So there's no, there's not another wrestle off there. Guaranteed. So then at that point, the the loser of that match will have the choice to go 79 or just not compete at all. I kind of think they're going to go 79, right? Yeah, you're right. Maybe he does do it. Got to. You know what? Jordan didn't completely shut it down in the post David interview when JD asked about him. You know, he thought about going up. He's like, ah, he was kind of like, no. He's like, maybe 79 if you know a non year, but basically no. Uh, so. Maybe he's mm. a, somewhat open to it. He kind of left the door open. But I think, um, I think if Jordan doesn't make the team, I, w- I wonder if he's like, you know, I'm going to take this section off and get ready. But maybe yeah. not. Maybe he's like, no, I want to keep keep wrestling while I'm wrestling well. We'll yeah. see. Uh, the trials will have a, a lot to 
say about that. Well, there's so much more to get into from the weekend, but I I can't wait any longer for this Dirk Bauer update. If Uh-oh. you don't know, oh man, <laughs> Kyle Brackey. Someone <laughs> asked, hey, would Kyle ever wrestle? Um, you know, in one of the flow cards. And Kyle's like, yeah, he kind of didn't rule it out. And then Ben, I think, is like, well, you need to call someone out. And Bracky had it in the chamber. Well, I, no, I called Butkey out. Oh, yeah, Josh Butkey. But then... Well, they, he asked me if I wanted to call anyone else out, and I just jokingly said, because uh, they was the only person I could think of. Dirk uh, Bauer. Um, but, yeah, uh, word got back to him, which I figured it would. And uh, <clears throat> Dirk messaged me on Saturday. Uh-oh. And uh, the bring it. No, uh, he's in. He does want to get paid, though. <laughs> <laughs> How much? Oh, <laughs> yes. Dirk, Dirk, you haven't exactly it. been in the street. Yes, but... Dirk. <laughs> you know no, what? Get Dirk some money. I love I'm it. Not, I'm not against. Uh, I'm not against paying for the gimmick match. So. I'm really not. To... How many? How many figures? Are we talking two figures, three figures, four figures? I don't, all the figures. I don't he, know. He I, didn't name his price. No. Um, we'll have to talk to I his representation. I also didn't ask either. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, Listen, get him and his wife a nice trip to Austin, Texas. Put him up in a really nice hotel. And, yeah. uh, you know, we'll call it even. Man. I didn't think about what I started when I said it. Because uh, that means, like, I got to actually, like, <laughs> yeah, you try to train. And train. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But what do you think, <laughs> you think Dirk's going to train for it? I mean, I can't imagine he wouldn't at least do something. I mean, is he like around wrestling? Like, is he like an assistant coach for a high school team? I don't or? know. I think he's uh, still in Wheeling and Wheeling Park High School where he went, tweeted and said they'd get him ready. Mm. You, you get ready. <laughs> Mike now gets you ready. You have to go so, for a week training camp with great. Ben. Yeah, Ben offered to, yep. for me to come up to AWA. Training which camp, I, I got to take advantage of that. Yeah. What, what? Ben will probably charge you, though. That's fair. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Um, so, okay. I'd like to talk about wrestling, wrestling, um, of which there was so much. Couple, The ACC was really popping this weekend because NC State mm-hmm. and UNC and Virginia Tech, they all kind of wrestled Ooh. each other. And it sets up perfectly. The ACC, big shout to the schedule makers there. They set it up so NC State, Virginia Tech would happen kind of after all the other duels. Um, so th- NC State beats UNC, and um, I relatively watched... Relatively easily. Relatively easily, 28-10. to 10. Um, A few interesting notes there. Jacob Camacho went absolute beast yeah. mode in the last like period and a half of this match. He hit a double leg that was so tremendous. It was like maybe a high crash to a double. Started on one end of the mat. He ran his feet so long, he almost finished out of bounds on the other end of the mat and put when, him down. Yeah, when he picked Tag up, his, like, back foot was on, like, the out-of-bounds line. And he picked Tag up and ran across the mat and finished on the other edge of the circle. Yeah. And Straight it, into a bottom leg Turk. It was beautiful. And that was, like, a 4-0 match, like, late in the second period. And he won 21-4. to um, yeah, I really think that Camacho could could be in the national finals. Like, oh, I, absolutely. I know it's maybe obvious, but I don't feel like a lot of people put him in that category. I think we said it when we were talking about who's some ra- uh, some uh, kind of outside the box finalists. I'm pretty sure we said it. We probably said both him and Latona. We did, which they will wrestle this Ooh. weekend, uh, Friday Ooh. at seven Central, eight Eastern. Uh, so we'll definitely be watching that. But yeah, Camacho looks. I mean, his offense is so reliable. He's Pretty good on the mat as well as many NC State wrestlers are. He's a really good scrambler. He really looks apart. He he looks like man. It's almost like you almost want to take Spencer out so you could have like a like I would like to see a Vito Camacho Glory Latona like all those guys like in a tournament and see how they do against each other. Spencer Seriously. is just a com- conversation shutter downer. Um, the the big shutter jerk, downer. The, the big bully Spencer Lee just destroying everyone. But yeah, Camacho looked great. Tariq Wilson, I mean, he he was down one late. He fires off a double, gets two and two to beat Zach Sherman. Um, where else do we want to go? The Kennedy Monday Thomas Bullard match was very interesting because it was really close late, and it looked like Bullard was going to win and ride out for the win. Yeah, they went. It was it was wild because uh, I was watching on TV and doing live updates and they ha- 
They get restart with like a minute left, and Bullard is just over like a minute riding time. Monday gets up to his feet. Bullard has a boot in. He returns him, which starts this crazy scramble. Monday was close to reversal. Takes up like 40 seconds worth of time. They go out of bounds. Mm -hmm. 18 seconds left, and riding time's locked for Bullard at this point. So it's essentially 2 nothing. It'd be hard to lose that match. Yes. North Carolina throws a challenge break, and when they threw it, it was kind of close to reversal. I thought maybe that's what they were looking for, but it turns mm -hmm. out they were actually looking for an illegal mat return that Bullard left his feet, but that wasn't clear on the broadcast. They thought they were looking for a reversal too, and then when they made the call, the people doing the broadcast thought it did an illegal hold, and they weren't on the ground there, so it was super confusing. Um, Isn't it then, annoying when the broadcasters don't know what the what the like the Chad read when they were called potentially dangerous? Yeah. Well, so annoying. We're here, you know, four days later, and we don't know what they're talking yeah. about. So I, <laughs> I give them a pass on that one. Yeah, and these guys aren't actually there. Like, yeah. uh, they were yeah. doing the broadcast from home or whatever. Uh, but it turns out it was because Bullard. It's kind of weird. He left his feet to return uh, Monday. I don't know. He had a boot in, but then he picked the other foot up off the mat to return him. <clears throat> so you can't leave your feet but, uh, on the mat. Return. So anyways, they go back. So there was 18 seconds left when they went to challenge. They go back to like 59 seconds remaining in the match. So it was, it was a little... They, so it's interesting because Coleman, you can hear him. As soon as he, Bowler does it, Coleman yells, he can't leave his feet. So he immediately saw his illegal mat return. But then the kind of scramble happens, and they hold on to the brick, and they hold on. They don't throw it to like 30 seconds left. Then they throw it, and then they kind of let the situation finish out. It gets down to 18. Then they look at it. They call it uh, the one point illegal, which I, which is which was clear. And then they, so, but they go back to 56 seconds after getting it down to 18. And then yeah. Monday ends up getting the win. Um, he got an escape, and then a takedown. In uh, over it? No, it was in regulation. In the last yeah. like 10, 15 seconds of regulation. Um one sixty five is a mess there. It's all cause of the ACC too. Really? Yeah, because um I think it was Keating beat Bullard, but then Bullard beat uh Winsel and then Winsel beat Keating. Winsel has the last win over Monday. They'll wrestle later in the year. It's just Yeah, that is a mess. And you know, Kennedy wrestled Mackay pretty tough, too. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, match. He got a takedown late, um, but Mackay Mackay had it. But at the end of the match, Mackay didn't look great. It was, uh, if you're Kennedy Monday, you and you could kind of tell, he's kind of like, okay, I'd like I'd like another opportunity for, for that one. And that's the Virginia Tech. Hey, uh, I'm kind of skipping ahead. I wanted to bring my rule book back up, though, Christian, oh, because perfect. I had it up already. It's well, great. I wanted to read the wording on this on this the the situation that we're talking about with Bullard and Monday. Oh, okay. It, it's funny because well, I I had just read through these, so I remembered. So the the name the name of the illegal hold is rear double knee kickback, which by reading the name of that would insinuate to me that it has to be two feet at the back of the knees, yeah. right? This is the JP double knee. He did this all the uh, time. Yeah. Uh, which uh, I don't really see people get hurt from there, so I don't. I don't. Maybe it does. I don't know why it's illegal. But then in the in the wording, it says it is illegal when a wrestler in the rear standing position leaves his feet and uses their lower leg to kick behind the defensive wrestler's knees in an attempt to bring the opponent to the mat. So you know it doesn't really. It, it says knees and double knee kickback, which would lead me to believe that you have to do it with both feet, not just one. Well, you know they, they'll they'll call it like yeah. the week before the Iowa Minnesota duel. Tom Brands had a good challenge. Um, it's almost like a scissor kick when the guys lock behind rear standing, mm, and he does yeah. that little scissor kick. Um, the Minnesota it, guy left both feet to kind of do that, so they'll call it for that. I think too. it is a lot. I think it is. They called that too. It was bad. No, no, not bad. Like, but I can see the danger. Which, of the one that Kyle just said? Mm-hmm. No, that one's not dangerous. Uh, what match? I watched a whole duel. I don't remember which match that was in, Kyle. Um, it was one of the upper Blanky, weights. I watched the whole duel. Was it? I thought. Maybe it wasn't. Mm. Okay. I, I, I watched I'm a whole duel. I'm struggling to remember which it. one right now. But, um, yeah, it was in Iowa, Minnesota. And Iowa won the challenge. 
I don't recall anyone ever getting hurt from that. And that, that one has been around for a while. And you, I mean, there should be more verbiage in there. Like if your feet are then planted on the ground again, before you actually do the return, it should not be illegal. Um, and you know, even the double rear knee kickback, like I would never teach that move. I don't really love it, but I don't really see it being illegal in any, you know, I don't see it hurting people. Maybe you guys could cite a time when it hurt somebody. Um, I cannot, I cannot personally cite that, but it is, it is some pressure on the knee. Uh, okay. So that happened. That was an exciting match. Kind of makes, man, Bullard's interesting. Anyone that can ride like that is, is, uh, going to be a tough out. His, his neutral, he, he can't really generate offense, which is going to make it yeah really tough for him. That, that, that's the can... problem. Christian is he, he's tough in scrambles. He's tough on top. He generally gets away on bottom. But he's going to almost always have close matches because he just can't generate the amount of offense he needs to on top. So anyone who's reasonably good, they're going to have a close match. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's yeah. been him a few times already this year. Losses to Keating and Fermato. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Cody, Cody Arnold says uh, Jake Aller got called for it. That's right. Bracky was right. It's a upper weight. Oh, Aller, oh, that was the one match I did not watch. Aller and uh, Kemmer because I did not figure it was going to be all that competitive. <laughs> Right, you were. That's right, uh, Kimmer. I went and showered. We were texting. I went and showered during that match. <laughs> Shower match. Uh, okay. Then Trumbull, this Trumbull guy, is he is something. He's electric. First of all, he's like 6'4". He's a, he's a small forward. And Great hair. Max Shaw, not as good as it was. I mean, it's, it has pretty regular yeah, haircut right chop. now. He's got a chop, yeah. Um, but oh. the hair's fine, you know, classic haircut. Max Shaw was looking pretty dang good. Max Shaw looked I thought good this weekend because um, he, he beat our guy, Andy Smith. Um, no, maybe the biggest upset listen, of the Christian, week. You jinxed Andy Smith. Andy Smith has won a damn match. He's not jinxed. <laughs> you um, jinxed my man. You jinxed him. We'll you have brought him day. up. <laughs> listen. Let me look. I'm going to see if he's even won one. I'm, I'm Googling yes, him Yes, right he's now. won matches. He's won. I don't know if he's won a match. He has uh, won. He's won a couple. He, like yeah. He's four and three. Yeah. He lost to the he number won, one and two guy. Point. He lost the number one and two guy in the country. WrestleStat has AL at eleven. Well, we dropped him too, some, but not. He's still a top like six guy. You can't drop him too far when he has wins over Jacob Warner. Got okay, it. so wait, who has wins over Jacob Warner? Yeah, Yellow. Oh yeah, he's Hello. pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. Um, and the oh, guy he dropped lost... him a spot actually. Yeah. So Trumbull was down like four one. And he was looking for upper body the whole time, the whole double match. unders, double unders. And it was funny. I was actually so proud of my son. I was watching it with Caleb. He's like, he's standing straight up. Why doesn't he have a good stance? I was like, well, <laughs> good observation, Caleb. But with underhooks, he doesn't know what an underhook is really. But um, underhooks, you know, you can get your hips in there if you have double unders like Joe Colon or whatever. But then he ends up with, I think it was over under body lock. Yeah. And... Boom, just tosses him to his back. It was tight. He had it. He used those uh, long legs to step behind a trip, Shaw. It, it was match over. Packed him. Oh. Um, so Trumbull, he's going to be he's gonna be an interesting guy coming into NCAA this year. And then year. Bonacorsi beat Aiello. So they both take another jump up. So, yeah, that now we've got <laughs> Isaac Trumbull, number five in the country. That's, that is uh, – of the things, and that's the Tuesday headline. That's the Tuesday headline right there that you did not see coming. That is something where a couple weeks ago, I mean, basically, that is the most unlikely occurrence. This is just so out of I nowhere. I mean, two weeks ago, he wasn't ranked where's, and wasn't the starter. It was Nick Creaney. Where's NC State now? Because Camacho's at two. Heidley's are both top three. Uh, he's at number five. Third. They got to be like, they're third. They're third. And look at this. Michigan wow. is at 78 and a half, but we've got guys ranked that have we haven't seen wrestle yet. We've got Mijic, Mijic in there. I don't know. Uh, Amin. So we haven't even seen uh, wow. two major point scorers this year for him. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. It, NC State is a really interesting team this year. I mean, they're really they're good. In, and someone like Tariq, if he can – we've seen what he can do. I feel like at this point he's kind of entered the Zeke Moisey zone where he's – Always going to have that yeah. electric performance he had the one time, but he's been basically the same guy throughout his career. Like, really good. He beat some good guys, but he'll take some losses. But mm -hmm. that, that said, they've got 
very reliable points with Camacho, Hidley, Hidley, um, who, who yep. both – they've all looked fantastic. So when you have I three mean, guys that are ranked those, those, second. Yeah. Big points. Very big points. Oh, my goodness. I just could – you guys put my man Donnell up to number six. Yeah. Have you checked Parker too? Uh, no, I've not checked. Hold on. Let me – so Donnell, I, our guys probably wrestled Donnell, I don't know, a dozen times or so. So uh, – and he came to a few of my camps. So I, I got familiar. I really like this kid. Um, I thought he would be a really solid college wrestler. I can't say I saw him getting this fast. Um you know he's got a good cradle. He's really rangy. Yeah. He's got some. He's kind of like s sneaky strong a little bit. Um, yeah. So he wrestled. He wrestled. Uh, so he was only lost is to Logan Massa this year. He beats Taroki Fisher Sizemore. Um, and he so, had a pretty solid red shirt year. Not great, but solid. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, um, Donnell DJ Washington beats Carter Staraki. He put him on his back early, and then he. He turned him in just a really goofy. It was like what it was, I was kind of like, what was Carter mm -hmm. actually doing there? He kind of <laughs> sat him, and just got kind of put right to his back for a two count, and then it's like, oh man, he's in big trouble. He's down eight one. Then Storaki comes back, and you're like, oh wow, he's gonna he's gonna. But he comes back comeback. early. Is the thing he comes in like back the early second period. The second period. Yeah. And then he just Carter could not get. He could not take this guy down. He could not generate the offense on his feet. Yeah. I thought they could have hit. Washington for stalling. I kind of thought it was warranted, but he he wrestled it right, and it looked imminent that Staraki was going to win, and he couldn't score on him. And I think overall, why, why don't we just transition to this Penn State thing um, while, while we're there? Because um, Penn State did they you know they didn't look great, right? But then you think about it. Okay, what is what is part of Penn State's secret sauce, right? They're People think they are the best at training their athletes. They are the best at development. And they had what appears to be like two weeks where they were not able to do that, right? Nothing. I don't think you could do anything. Couple that with, couple that with, so a couple weeks off the mat, couple that with, it is a really young team, couple that with, they haven't wrestled a match yet. So you put all those things together. And you get a down performance well, from the team. I am. Uh, and then, well, Christian, the other thing you didn't add in there was they were they were missing guys too. Yeah, and they you know they didn't have a twenty five available. So ninety seven, they, they got guys from the student union. <laughs> they got the student unions involved. I don't know where, but I don't know. And you have to assume there could be COVID things with with some of these guys. Um, you're not gonna know. We're not going to be told, yeah. I don't think. But, you know, they didn't look, they did not look, they did not look great. But I don't think it's anything to be alarmed about. Yet at the same time, we're getting down to it. It's almost Big Ten. I mean, yeah. they have a couple duels, they have a handful of duels. They'll have Big Ten's NCA. So it's not like you're not going to have a scuffle to like work some things out. You're not going to have a, you're just going to get dropped in the fire and that's it. And, and, Bracky's pulled up the remaining of four duels remaining because the Michigan one's postponed as of right now. Yeah. Hey, actually, let me ask you guys a question. I just pulled something up. So, I will, so obviously, we haven't talked about it, but Penn State is at Wisconsin tonight, which was only announced two days ago. Right. So, I'm actually curious if they even went home because they were, I believe they were at Northwestern in Chicago, or they just stayed there and then said, hey, let's wrestle another match. And they drove north. But the other thing I just noticed, I was clicking on Indiana's schedule to see who else Donnell's got. Um, and I thought Big Ten was limited to tries, but there's a quad. It's Indiana, Michigan State, Rutgers, and Nebraska are all in Indiana. So I didn't even think they could do quads, but apparently they're they're doing quads now. Did you guys hear about this? Uh, yeah, I didn't know they were doing I did that not, either. but I did see somebody else had a quad on their schedule. I forget really? who it was. I was yeah, yeah, I was looking at stuff the other day for somebody. We were looking at it at work. I forget what it was. It might have been Rutgers, maybe. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I guess it, kudos to and that, you know, we kind of crap on the Big Ten a lot, but kudos to them for being willing to be flexible. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, you know, just throwing this Penn State duel in. And I think this Penn State duel starts at like 3 p.m. or something also, which I appreciate that because then I can watch it. I don't have to coach practice. I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate that whatsoever. What do you mean? You guys, you guys, this is your job. You can just sit and it's hang not, out in the office with your buddies and watch. Is it really a three? 
It's four. It's early. Five p.m. Eastern, four p.m. Central. Oh my gosh. Four p.m. That's terrible. Dang it. We have our. Why is that terrible? Show. That's outstanding. I can watch it. People aren't even home in. from work yet. Who like viewership for that Stop is not going to be good. Becky. We have our meeting three thirty, four thirty. Well, you good. better move your meeting. Yeah, that's uh, we've moved it like four times already. It's been a. <laughs> um, anyway, no but one cared. I, no one could possibly care about that. I mean, guys, when did this Penn State Wisconsin thing happen? Because it like literally it was not on the schedule. I think it got on the schedule. I believe it was yesterday morning, which is I heard Monday. Sunday. I heard Sunday night. Sunday? I, think, I think Bono tweeted. Bono it tweeted night. about it Sunday after. Yeah, after the Nebraska duel. Okay. Which is yeah, yeah so, sort of weird, but um, yeah, Tuesday afternoon wrestling, but the, I'm sure they're doing it early because Penn State's gonna fly home that night or yeah. tonight. Yeah, to figure out why. Um, but yeah, back to back to Penn State. You know, RBY he looked fine, but he only beat Luigs eleven eight. Kind of Luigs got some a takedown at the oh, end, which is like you wouldn't have expected that. Um, Brady Berge's back. We thought we maybe would see him against Ryan Deacon. No Ryan Deacon. Penn State Northwestern was supposed to have like four or five ranked matchups. Terrible. None. None. And Deacon and D'Agostino, um, uh, or Deacon we thought was going to be back, but he wasn't back. Yeah, that was not good. Kane um, wrestled one hey, duel, didn't what, wrestle the other. But what what is the situation with – Um, oh, my gosh, I'm blanking on it. Uh, what – What's oh Robbie Howard? Robbie. What's the situation with Robbie Howard? Uh, because Penn State doesn't have a one twenty five pounder, I guess. He's fine. He just had to sit a little bit more. Um, just so is he gonna be back today? Like, are they gonna? Have a I don't know if he'll be back today. today. I believe he will be back. I heard he would be back the next weekend. Now I don't know. Okay. If, I don't know how close he was to the threshold for how long you have to sit out. Um, yeah, but he, you know. He'll be back. Just okay. not sure entirely um, when. Yeah, that was uh, that was something I was I was curious of. It is, it is always so curious to me, like Penn State. Um, you know they they've done the best job, you know, almost historically of developing guys to be really high level. But then sometimes like they they have these gaps, and you're like, wait, they don't. I mean, and obviously no one's redshirting. They don't have any one twenty five pounders they can throw in, or like. Their one ninety seven pounder is a guy I've I've never heard of in my life. I don't know where he's from. I, I mean, I literally I think maybe they did get him to the student union. Like, how do they not have a little more solid guys behind some of these uh, starters? A ninety seven could be from the creamery, though. We can't we can't <laughs> rule out the creamery. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's this happens every now and again. They wrestle. I, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I was like, I've never read this name in my life. And he's starting for Penn that, State. Yeah. He's like, he's following up Mark Hall. Who is this person? Crane uh, Netzel. You're starting for the most elite program in the country, and we've never heard of you. That shouldn't happen. Yeah, I don't I don't know. But they have some bizarre depth in other spots, too. It's yeah. like Mason Manville is just like this, you know, cadet world champion that's just like around, you know. For forever. Where's Mason Mandel? Why didn't he wrestle 187? Yeah, why didn't he wrestle well, 197? That'd be a little big for him. Yeah. We've, we've seen him up at 184. They threw him out against Miles Martin one time, and that was not good. Um, hey, um, I just had something come across my Twitter feed, and okay. you guys keep me there. What is America's Cup? Are we doing another dual meet thing that I've never heard of? Yes. Um, yes, we are. On flow. Fact. On flow. February 10th and 11th. It, so it's it, coming up quick. In Austin? No, unfortunately, it's not in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's Where in it? North Carolina. Yeah, that's right, Charlotte area. Oh, yep. So it's how? Kinda... Did, well, I mean, like, it seems like something like this should take a lot of planning, but that's that's literally eight days away. I know. So there's like a is a it just training something... camp that's going on around oh. that time, and then they're gonna have a like a they're gonna get teams and have them wrestle each other. So is it just something to get these guys matches because they haven't got matches? Is that what's going on? I mean, is that like the reasoning behind this? Because I mean, this this is not an event that's happened historically at all, right? I I don't I actually do not know a ton about this. I think that's what yeah. it is, Ben. It's training camp and yeah. then competition, and a little little bit of little bit of moolah for these. And guys. there is money involved, yes. 
Well, I, you know, I, I like I like the fact that, and it, maybe it took Corona for these guys to realize it. But you guys, you know, you guys, you guys know I brought up that I tried starting two professional leagues and they both failed. Um, and I, I know that there's the feeling I remember the sentiment was no one wanted to wrestle each other. They're all like so strange about, or maybe the weight wasn't perfect. It was off by three pounds. And now it just seems like these guys are so much more willing to say, yeah, whatever. I'll wrestle. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Nate Jackson, Hey, 215, 215 pounds. Ah, whatever. Let's go. You know, Oh, it's Wednesday. It's Saturday. And then you guys need someone for Wednesday. Okay. Let's do it. You yeah. know, like it's, it's such what needed to happen because these guys, they all wrestled each other in the practice room. And that was the kind of annoying thing about us. We all knew they competed with each other on a regular basis. And we all know the practice room is not a big deal if you move up 20 pounds. So in a match situation, why is it a big deal if you move up four? And the answer is it shouldn't be. And it feels like people are finally coming to recognize that. Yeah, um, it's been great. It's been great to have more matches. And uh, I'm glad that the wrestlers are having that revelation and getting involved. And mm -hmm. we're the fans are the biggest beneficiaries of that uh, well yeah, i'd like to think it's the, the the wrestlers would be as well uh, since they're getting paid for the first time to, oh they are yeah uh so i mean because what i'm oh, sorry uh can i say one more thing there christian yeah well, otherwise we can repeat it. uh what they don't realize is, is the wrestlers are the ones that need, need to develop this into something and the more they make it happen it's going to be like a snowball is what i feel like and they'll be getting paid more and more and more um, and, and I think some of these guys are recognizing that and some aren't, um, some are not anyway. Okay. So we go to Oklahoma state. Oh my. Cause we got oh <clears throat> some Ferraris to talk about. Yeah. To go, go for it. <laughs> I was not going to bring this up. Okay. You got to talk about it. One, uh, Oklahoma state does their weekend trip to, to Iowa. They, 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 Comfortably win against you and I. Uh, you and I scrapped. Oh, it was they, a great duel. They always do. You know, that, and we talked, I brought it up uh, last week. You know, certain, certain teams are going to fight and wrestle you hard, and you and I's won them every single time. And uh, a Teske Mastro was a great match. I'm uh, really impressed with Teske's, Teske's top work. Teske's on top. I, that, yeah. Yeah. that to me, but, listen, I watched Teske a decent amount in, in high school. And I just don't remember that kind of top work from him. Yeah. And I, I know for a fact that you and I spend they, like top is a real point of emphasis in that program. That's not true at a lot of places where they're like, no, this is super important. So I think he's made pretty tremendous strides in a little bit of time. And now he's ranked, well, he's six in the country now. Yep. It's pretty incredible. He looked good. And Mastro is, is, a, is a tough customer. Yeah, he was good on top too. He almost yeah. he almost got I the, thought he was the turn get, to answer. He almost did get yeah. it. Yeah. Um anyway. Uh what else happened there? Biscoglia Whitcraft was weird. That was so how did they not get you you talked about the Malik Heisman stall call. I was almost offended by what happened that no one called <laughs> that for stalling. This man sat on the wrist, double grip offended. on the wrist for a minute, a minute plus. It was it was a freaking long time. I it was mean, a long... especially at the end of the match. It was Reese Whitcraft was resorted to like jumping and trying to leap over him. That was wild. That yeah. was so funny. Yeah. But we get that clip up. That sequence was hilarious because yeah, Whitcraft was just so frustrated, and I could not believe the refs did not call him for stalling. That was weird. That's something that in international wrestling would never ever fly. They'd be like, ever. They call that negative wrestling, and you you got to. Why did that fly in a, in college wrestling? Listen, uh, there's so many whys after this weekend. I don't know. I have no idea why. <laughs> it's not the right call. You should not be allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean that it's about dude... as stalling as stalling gets. But you know what? Don't break the. I don't think he had been warned, right? Did he even get a warning at yeah, him? Yeah, no. I don't so think it's like, if I'm Biscoglia, I'm not letting it go of the wrist until I get warned one good time, and then we can I go agree. from there. Um, <laughs> he jumped over him. He literally jumps over him, and then it's like, well, I cannot get that. He must have a heck of a grip because it's, it's not like oh, yeah. a. John, John, yeah. Coach Smith, literally on the mat. We're sending it to you. I know I alluded to this, but the man is on the mat. He's almost yeah. inside the ring. Yeah, watch this. That's watch his this. feet right there, right? No, you'll see it. That's the wrap. You'll see. Yeah, you'll see. Okay. So, yep, may as well leave. Uh, no, not going to work. We're rolling around. <laughs> across my back. 
And like Fiscaglio. I mean, that's the is. definition of that's the definition of stalling. It's when the man rolled over his back, he didn't even try to get on top of me, he just held onto the wrist still. Nope. Yeah, he, he oh, literally he's like bad. he's like, I could put him on his back, but I think I'm just going to I know I'm gonna can continue uh, just to hold this wrist. It's so bad. It's so bad. And there's there's the goat. Well, Listen, I would have the lost goat my mind can too. roam where he pleases. Listen, he gets a pass. He gets a pass from me. But I think you need to give a pass to Nebraska when they're celebrating an awesome Peyton Rob to a, uh, pin as well. Oh, Just man. saying. I'm only saying. All right. So they, they elsewhere, what the Ferrari thing that everyone's we're, uh, we're gonna get there. We're getting about. there. We're working our He's way. Building. We're working our way through you and I first. <laughs> Uh, plot Runyon was an awesome match. Uh, Runyon yes, is really good. good. Runyon is for real. Yeah, he is for real because we know Plot's real. Um, Parker, your boy Ben, you called it. Take a second to gloat, please gloat. Oh yeah, I did. Well, I, you know, I had a lot of good calls. I called Parker, Malik, Nate Jackson. I had a lot of good calls. You were on Sweet fire. Time. Yes, in Fuego. Oh, it's baby. almost as though you have a great deal of wrestling knowledge. Uh, Parker, <laughs> how about this, Ben? Now 24-1 and one in his college career, if you count his redshirt wow. season last really? year. I, I did not realize it was that good. I mean, he, he, the, the thing was, uh, the, bad calls. And I, so I didn't realize, I watched this duel, um, Christian, and I didn't realize that Coach Schwab had um, used his challenges, but that was it was just such an obvious takedown in the second period yeah i don't know how that wasn't or it was the second period yeah the end of the second period and it would have been a big takedown because it was one of those where gear would not have gotten the chance to escape because there was like five seconds left or something like that yeah i mean it was it was bad and it, honestly when i saw that i was like they threw a bad you and i threw a bad brick earlier i was like what no, don't don't do this. You're just excited right now and throwing brick. It's like save it. You never know. <laughs> and they didn't have their brick. I think that would have been clear. Now, never say never with uh, in this day and age of of some of the calls we saw. Yeah. But I feel so like certain if they look at that, they'd be like, okay, because he never went out of bounds at mm -hmm. any point in time. Gear didn't like no. do the classic. Let me get my foot on the gym Hand floor. Out, yeah type of shenanigans there were no shenanigans it was just a, a double leg takedown it was double leg yeah both ankles those are legal and often two points and he, <laughs> he met all the criteria necessary but then then i was like you know what this is kind of the classic freshman you're right there you feel like okay you'll get him in march type of thing but you're gonna lose in sudden victory and then he gets to get parker shot so many times he shot yeah. so many daggone times it was ridiculous and so many times it looked like gear was going to come around and circle. And then he just find a way to get in better position. He ends up on a shot. He's extended. And then he pulls himself up in and he gets the two and he beats Dakota gear. Uh, it was a great match. Yeah. Yeah. That yes. was, that was, it was, it was a fun match to watch. I loved it. Uh, all of it. Um, I don't want to go about that too long. Hey, how about this Keegan Keegan Moore? This man was like a, a mad ram. He didn't even hide his headbutts. No, nope. like put his hand. No chill. So like, usually if you're gonna headbutt someone, like kids, if you're gonna headbutt someone, you put your hands up and you kind of like you hide your head, you know, hopefully so they don't see the headbutt. Keegan Moore put his hands behind him and like this is fucking this headbutt him. It was so absurd. I was like dying. I was rolling on the couch laughing so hard at it. Yeah, it was. He had quite a few shenanigans. I was like, "What are you doing, man? Why are you? Why are you?" It's weird. Um, I don't know. Maybe he, he's 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 former Oklahoma State wrestler. I don't know if he was trying to prove something to Ferrari or what. But it was he did a great job the first period, kind of yeah. uh, defending some. Not getting called for headbutts. Not getting called for headbutts, but he also finished off some some nice shots from Ferrari, and then Ferrari got the takedown there at the end of the second period. That kind of opened up the floodgates and he he goes on to win 10-4 yeah. tyler you have that tweet of mine this was insane so aj does the thing where he's on his knees all the time and ben you mm -hmm. talked about it uh last week kind of exploding through on the doubles this one wasn't a double he just Wild. <laughs> he pete rose slid into a single here and yeah. he finished this shot too he finished it that looks tremendous <laughs> i mean he come on the only other guy I've really seen do I'm sure other people have done it, and you'll give me all these examples, but I've only seen Salas, the Cuban, do that. Like, where they just, on their knees, and they just, like, pounce. Like a... No, I think it's few and far between. Like, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of people that... Ben did it that. a lot in his... Very unique. In his... Uh, <laughs> just a freak athletic <laughs> specimen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't do that. 
All I'm right. Not, so then, it. moving on to the, the match everyone wants us to talk about. Oh, uh, I can't believe we're gonna talk about this. You can't. You can't not talk about it. I, I'm so far we have AJ Ferrari <laughs> <laughs> got caught uh, grabbing something of younger Bastidas. It wasn't his. It was not his. It belonged to Younger. It belonged to Younger. And Younger let the official know. He's like, that's mine. This is mine. He has a hold of it right now. The the first rule of... of, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That was a great line, Ben. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Why did he do it? What was Ferrari thinking? What was he doing? Doing that in neutral is wild. Listen... This is the man who told Jordan Burroughs to shut up and wrestle. Well, as a wrestler, the, he's a bold person. He's a bold individual. And he's going to be bold. What move was coming? What move was coming off of that? Listen, it's just an evolution of, of Sargush's. You it's know, the you new this way scene. to defend a two on one. Uh, the five on one. Yeah. Oh, that was not a good look. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the screen. We don't it's have so it. Funny. It, it may be, it, you know, it's it could on. be an SEC violation for us to, oh, to God. show something like that. Um, it was, it was, uh, yeah, that yeah. was. What do you think Coach Smith says about that? <sighs> oh, hey, hey, AJ, what were you doing there? You grabbed the man's wiener. You can't <laughs> do that, wrestling. <laughs> Oh, I said elbow pull. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, we oh, got... we have it up. We have the clip. Yeah, oh, screw no. it. Play it. We're just going for We're it. We're going Play for it. it. We're just dag on it. I love Younger's reaction. He's just like, hey, no, can you guys oh. check this out? <laughs> Great, you know what? I think no, it was is underhook defense. It was underhook defense. <laughs> oh, all right, get it off the screen. <laughs> you know, I applaud Younger. He like knew where the ref was. How did he know where he was? He's like, oh, he's right there. He immediately turned. Oh my! There were so there were so many funny tweets that came off of this. Uh, Why is he grabbing him? Mark Hall, oh Mark Hall said uh, Younger really thought he was done with this stuff when he left Cuba, um, not having to deal with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh. what, what, uh, Gable, Gable was like, no, no. I don't want to wrestle this guy anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man. So, that was... uh, can I tell a story? Because since you brought the Cuban up. So I will not name said clinician because I don't want to. I don't want to drag us. I was a kid. I was like 12 years old. And the dude says, uh, he's showing this move on a college guy. And he said, yeah, there's this move you call the Cuban. And you're on a gut wrench. And you drop down and <laughs> squeeze, you know. And he actually did it to the dude. He did it to the college dude. He squeezed his nuts. Ah! Oh, my gosh. I, it are, happened. We, are we sure <laughs> you shouldn't? Or should you really I not say that? I mean, it kind of feels like uh, the, dude started, the dude started screaming, and I, we were all like, oh, my God. We don't actually have to do this move, do we? Like, I'm not grabbing his junk. That's uh, That feels super illegal. That might be, that might be against safe sport violation now. You I mean, think? 1995 or something. I don't know what the statute of limitations is. Safe sport I don't, is this person still actively doing clinicians? Or clinics? Uh, I don't. Maybe I don't know. Well, what's his name? We'll Google it. I'm not gonna throw his name in the mud here. On yeah, on, we, I, mean, I know it's it's a conversation between a couple dudes. Yeah, <laughs> we're not. I don't even have lying. like a relationship with him really. I'm not really for him or against. I'm more like neutral about this person. Okay, got it. But now that I think about it, like I probably haven't thought about that in like 15, 20 years. But you know, he said the the Cuban, and that was what the clinician called the move. Mm. You you do the gut wrench and you squeeze the nuts. Okay, <laughs> it's a great setup. Can you believe he showed that in a camp with kids? Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. That's uh yeah. All right, well, we'll t- tell me who it is so I don't inadvertently send Caleb to one of his clinics. Um, I, I will uh, after the show. I'll tell you. Yeah, guys. our uh our man uh, Dan Seifring by the way said Penn State did not go home. They're just chilling, which makes sense. Just chilling. 
join yeah. Chicago. Plus, school is. It's a, be, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier because um, no, there's probably no in-person school going on, right? So they can just oh, yeah. no classes. You know, just get that good Wi-Fi. They should just go on a tour of the Midwest and just, you know, two days later, wrestle another one. Two days wrestle later, wrestle another one. Just, you know, maybe drop into UNI. I agree. Oh, man. That'd be great. So, okay. Absolutely. That happened. Hopefully. I don't think there was anything else really crazy in that duel. I don't. They gave Montavo the start at 74. I wish we would have seen plot. Uh, but Broderson won that in tiebreakers. Um. I Maybe know. I think I understand though. I think you give um I Montalvo's certainly not going to beat out Plot for the spot, but so, you know, some of your depth guys, I think it's important they do get matches. Um maybe not against a starter like Broderson, but um, Oh, while we're talking about Iowa State, we should mention Alex Mackel. Yes. Uh, no longer with the team. Um, going home to raise a family. Yes. Yeah. I think he I think he'd lost the wrestle off as well. Uh, yeah, but best of luck to him. Yes, uh, for sure. Okay, so that was Oklahoma State's weekend. Hopefully, a little less drama next time. They, I, well, that I, was fun to talk about. I think AJ Fry is going to be this dude for four years. He's going to be five. This year doesn't yeah. count. That's right. Yeah, five. he Which is. Uh, <laughs> he's electric. Is it? Listen, it's he's he's going to be electric. For, for five years. Can, can, his, can this last? Is this sustainable? Yes. Okay. I mean, for Wait, me. Do you guys still not have him in the rankings? We do not. What the hell's wrong with you guys? You got Trumbull up at five. Trumbull beat, beat Bonacorsi. Yeah. What oh, you listen, don't give me your reasoning. Don't give me your reasoning. Yeah, don't. don't, don't give I don't want to hear logic. any reasoning. What do you want him in the rankings for? For, for, for beating a bunch of guys with losing records? Yeah. Listen, I'm sure he beat somebody that beat Trumbull last year. They were both in high school. Put him at number five. Are you, are you, high school? Are, are you kidding me right now? First of all, AJ Harley wrestled a high this school. This is a last this year. is a worse argument than some of the dads that write in. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting relegated to high school wrestling dad. Uh, He's beaten Andrew dad. Logan, JJ Dixon, Austin Andrews, uh, Dylan Johnson, Kane Hudson, Keegan Moore, who's an 84 pounder, and younger Bastida. Who doesn't have a D1 Undefeated. Win. What can I say? He's undefeated. He'll get there, but, you know, could he beat A-ranked guy? He's untakedownable. He hasn't even gotten taken down yet. Listen, I'm all in. Uh, we're in on the Ferrari train as far as him being good, but he's not rankable. He could maybe be 25th, though. This is 25th. Yeah, 7 0. Oh, I think you put him in there. For clickbait, that's what Flo does. He's he'll get, great, he'll great get his chance this weekend ranking. against Jake, uh, Jacob Woodley. Beat Woodley. Beat Woodley. Ooh, February 7th. Woodley, what, what's Woodley, like 12, 13? I think 11 right now. Woodley's good on top, he too. You beat Jake Woodley. Yeah. A little Bedlam action. You guys got Michael Beard in there. Michael Beard hasn't wrestled a match this year. Zero. He's wrestled college. He's beaten ranked college wrestlers. I mean, Penn State just wrestled their first duel this weekend. Yeah. You're supposed yeah. to penalize that now. If he did, Yeah. Woodley's 13. So you're in the top. Mm. They're in there the top go. 13. You win this weekend. So it'll yeah, all work like out. It. So we didn't really get to it's 939. Holy smokes. Um we had too much fun today. I don't think I've laughed as much, but I mean usually people ain't grabbing other people's junks and whatnot. Um I mean and then funny. the Ram the Keegan Moore Ram headbutt was that I was dying laughing when it <laughs> happened. It was like, what is going on right now? It was so obvious. Um Iowa, we <laughs> didn't even get to talk about them. Behind him. Yes, he did. Yeah, he was almost drawing attention to it. Um, yes, Iowa destroyed Illinois, as as we you know everyone expected, and as was probably supposed well, to happen. No oh Marinelli. They wrestled Joe Kelly. He's gonna be out for a while. It sounds like. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah. Well, I he didn't, can't be out for that long. He, Coach Brands didn't really answer the question. He said, "You know the 17 day protocol." Yeah, but I think starting, you can look at the calendar and figure out when. But starting when? Well, I don't know when the 17 days started. Well, yeah, I don't know when it started, but it okay. Clear, okay, but he wrestled last week, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, after so last some week. point. So some point after yeah. that, but we don't know exactly when. So no, we can't. I. Oh. I mean, you can figure but, it out. Uh, to a, I mean, sorry he didn't give you the exact time that he. Uh, okay. Well, when? When, when, when will he be back well, so then? I mean, look at like so. Okay, so we'll ask. 
So he wrestled on Friday, right? Against Minnesota or Friday. No, yep. this Friday against Minnesota. The, the 22th. Right, the 22th. So somewhere between Eighth probably right here, the, the 30th, I'd say. He tested positive. Between the 8th so, and the 16th, he's eligible. Again. Do we know that he tested positive? For all we know, is just contact trace, right? Yeah, it's just contact. We don't know. Uh, the 17-day protocols for people that test positive. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, contact tracing is just like... I think it's either Seven 10 days, days or 14 or however, like whatever your thing is. Now. But I'm pretty sure the Big Ten 17 day is for people that test positive. Okay, so maybe no yeah. bull for a little bit. Um, uh, we'll, um, we'll... Hey, Christian, but you guys had the line at negative 40, and they only lost by 30, FYI. Well, I thought if, if Marinelli wrestles and gets a technical fall or something, yeah. that's or a pin. Then well, that was one been. of the things that we – we're surmised though is like uh, you yeah. know when you're gambling in corona season you gotta you gotta account for people missing because that's just so likely to happen yeah and then yes minimum 17 days if you test positive i mean if <laughs> marinelli wrestles and wins by a decision and then brands finishes that takedown against bronigal then then it then it hits so it was within the margins and that's why it's a that's why it's a line uh but bronigal Brands, good good match there. Not a ton else. Cassiope pinned Luffman, which is mm-hmm. which is notable. Max Murin beats Michael Carr. Oh yeah. And re- revenge. Good match. Max Murin continues to look very good. And Max Murin gets the a little revenge after the whole cry situation when Mike Carr did this after he, he beat him in the duel. Max Murin oh shakes God. hand, he's running wow. off, and you can see Murin say, who's crying now? Yeah, he said, who's crying now? It was kind of cool. It was mm. good. Yeah, good for him. Good line, good line. Could have said it to his face, but probably didn't come to him at that moment in time. Um, Marinelli likely going to miss Ohio State, Penn State then. No, although Ooh. although when you think about it, yeah, Ethan Smith, I do want to see that match. He's Ethan, looked great. Ethan looks good. Yeah, Ohio State's an interesting team this year. Some other guys like Malik look really good. Ethan Smith looked really good. Caleb Romero looks really good. Romero. Romero looks good. Really but then like eighty Rocky Jordan probably should have not won in regulation against Cochran of Maryland. Did you watch this match, Ben? I did not. I've heard about it though. He was getting the fire road out of him. Yeah. Head on the mat. Yeah. Can't get off the bottom. Yep. It's kind of a tale of as old as time a little bit with 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 the Jordans. Allegedly. Allegedly. It's all alleged. We are very pro Jordans here. However, they hit him for stalling with like 30 seconds to go. And then with like 18 seconds to go, they hit him with a stalemate. It was, uh, it was bad. Uh, it was you, pretty bad. You got to let it go. Let him oh, wrestle. They told me um, 97 in Ohio State, Maryland was really yep. bad, but I didn't get a chance to look at that. That is also true. Jerron Smith put Chase Singletary on his back for between four and five seconds. It was certainly four Not seconds. No it could have been five. And they gave two near fall. And so, you know, they challenge it, as you do when you're given half the amount of points you should get. And they looked at it and they said, nailed it, two near fall, <laughs> and let's move on. And Jerron Smith lost to, to Singletary. who In did, sudden victory. The, sudden, the four points would have ended in regulation. Yes. Uh, Singletary did not look amazing. No. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're sort of weird at, at, uh, 97 and 84 for sure. 33, mm-hmm. Jacob, uh, oh my gosh, Jordan D- Decatur. Yes. Um, I don't know why I almost got them mixed up, but, uh, not Jacob, not Jacob. He was up big, gassed hard. It was like nine to one and ended up being 14 to nine. And if he hadn't, he snuck a takedown in the third period to kind of ice it or else he, he might've lost. Yeah. I don't know if this this uh, conditioning thing's going to get worked out with him at any point. Yeah. At, at some point, you're just someone that. Only... We all right. Help us out, Ben. If you just said what? all you have to do is get Jordan Decatur to be able to wrestle hard for seven minutes, what do you do? What is it? What is it? What do you no, see? Uh, that's the wrong strategy. Um, some people are super fast twitch, like him. Some people are super slow twitch, like me. That's like so telling you telling me you're gonna get Jordan Decatur Russell Hart for seven minutes is like telling me you're gonna get Ben Askren run a four four forty. Shit ain't happening. It huh? ain't gonna happen. Got it. It is not gonna happen. All right, so give so up. So I would 
Uh, no, 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 no. I would, I would wrestle a strategy that's conducive to, um, you know, exploding scoring points and then, you know, holding position or being, you know, being smart with how you wrestle. Uh, you know, I think one thing that he could do would be, uh, if, if he, they get good on top, you can conserve a lot of energy there because top can sometimes be a lot easier than being on bottom or being in the neutral position. So if you get a takedown, you can be on top for a couple minutes. That's a, a much easier place, right? Somewhere where you can kind of conserve energy. Um, get really technical on bottom. Cause if you get technical on bottom, you don't got to work your butt off to get out. Like if you suck on bottom, bottom is just draining of energy. Mm -hmm. But if you can get really technical, then sometimes you can, you know, get away or get reversals really efficiently. So you're not wasting a lot of energy. So there, there's absolutely things you can do. Um, and you know, I was actually just talking about this. I think, I think two days ago, but wrestling is, um, one of those sports where you can kind of use lots of things to your advantage. You just need to figure out how to wrestle so you can do that. Right. So someone who's slow twitch can use slow twitch to his advantage. Someone who's tall can use tall to their advantage. Someone who's short can use short to their advantage. Someone who's, um, explosive can use their explosiveness to their advantage. You just got to figure out the right strategy for yourself. Yeah. Um, he, he really is a guy whose mat wrestling crushes him. So if he could just get yeah. 30 seconds of riding, he just really, he can't keep guys down. Um, yeah. And he's terrible on bottom too. Yeah, so, I mean. He's always kind of like struggled on the mat. He's always been great on his feet and he's yeah. always gotten tired at the end of matches. Um, yeah. So if you, if you put some time into uh, riding and then getting away on bottom without using a ton of energy, bo both of those are going to be huge pluses for him, but he's, he's awful at both of those things. So I think that would, that would be like an area you would look at first. He's someone who, like, you can see being – I mean, he has been really, really good at freestyle, and you can kind of understand why. Yeah. Shorter matches and, like, it really better rewards the less explosive mat movements. There's a lot less yeah. mat wrestling, a lot more on your feet. He's got that feet-to-back potential from – you know, he's got a yep. carry. He's got a good hey, double. Actually, he's pretty good on top. I mean, if I remember right, in freestyle, he's got a yep. really solid gut wrench, right? Yeah, he's and solid. And so, like – Freestyle, he scores a decent amount of points on top, and in folk style, he doesn't really do anything on top. No, no, not at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, Maryland was kind of scrapping. There, it's it's hard times for the Terps in the Big Ten and the Big Ten only. That's tough, but they're wrestling hard. They're gonna get. It's gonna take a bit, but they're gonna get better. Michigan State's getting better. Michigan State wrestled. Uh, I thought they wrestled Ohio State pretty dang tough as well. Omania pushed Sasso. Chase Saldate continues to look pretty good. Um, Rayvon Foley does not look uh, great, but they're they're solid. They're solid all around. It's nine forty nine. I'm sure Ben has to be on the day show or something <laughs> soon, so we got to get out of here. Um, so, hey, plenty to talk about wrestling this afternoon. Check it out. Exactly. Oh, 4 p.m. Don't miss a free meeting. Skip your meeting. Yeah, <laughs> skip, we're skipping meetings. Uh, thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. Come Hacker High Water. Thanks so much. Happy Tuesday. Have a good one. Later.